Is your hot end temperature fluctuating and ruining your prints? Well, in this video, I've got two easy fixes. Sometimes you might notice that your 3D printer has trouble holding a steady temperature for the hot end during printing. It might happen after changing the hot end, a part cooling fan, or more commonly, after changing the main board. In this video, I'm going to present two fixes. They're both easy and either free or cheap. The first one is built into our firmware and it's called PID Auto-Tune. Here I've connected to my 3D printer with Octoprint and you can see I have a really nice smooth line for my hot end temperature. If you're not so lucky, however, your graph might look more like one of these. It might have really frequent oscillations like on the top or seem more erratic like on the bottom. Fortunately, our first option is free as it's built into Marlin firmware and it's M303, which is PID Auto-Tune. You might be thinking, what exactly is PID? PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative and it's an algorithm used to control many industrial control systems including the hot end and bed for our 3D printers. Don't worry, to do the tuning you don't need to be an expert on this. But it's probably worth understanding why we need a PID loop in the first place. You might think that when your hot end is powered, the heater comes on, the temperature rises and then when it reaches the target temperature, the heater switches off. But this is not true because there's energy already in the system it's going to overshoot the mark and then oscillate trying to find the right temperature a good analogy might be a rocket ship if we have a target altitude and we give it full power until we hit that altitude after we turn it off the rocket ship's going to keep going by the same token if we wait until we're below the altitude to give it power there'll also be delay and if we repeat this we have some big oscillations what PID aims to do is to turn off the heater power before it reaches the target and then cycle it as accurately as it can to hold it near the target. Now I'm controlling this by hand in a game that I've made, but a good PID algorithm will be very accurate and be able to hold the temperature steady. So what makes PID Auto-Tune so good is that it can test the characteristics of your 3D printer to find out the best values for the algorithm and then these can be stored for more stable heater control in future. Usage is as follows, we enter M303 and then we have an optional count, the default being 5. We have the index for our hot end. For a single extruder, you can leave this out because it defaults to 0. If you wanted to do your heated bed, you would enter minus 1. We have our target temperature and this should be what you print with the most. And then the U flag we can include if we want it to save straight to the printer's memory. So with the hot end nice and cool, we switch to our terminal. I'm going to suppress temperature messages just so this isn't too annoying and then enter our g-code. I went with M303, C5 for 5 cycles, S200 for 200 degrees and U1 to save to memory. We have confirmation that the PID auto-tune has started and if we switch back to temperature we can see that it started to cycle it. In the middle of the test you'll notice the temperature going up and down as it works through each cycle trying to fine-tune the settings. A short time later you'll notice the temperature dropping and if we switch back to the terminal we should see that the auto-tune is complete. Because I use the U1 flag it should be stored in the memory but it won't be saved when we restart the printer. Therefore I'm going to do an M500 to save the values to the EEPROM. If your version of the firmware doesn't have EEPROM enabled you can take these three values and put them into your start g-code. The command is M301 and then a P, I and D with the value substituted in as shown after the auto-tune. So when should you do this? Definitely if you notice any fluctuations in your temperature, even if you're just viewing it on the LCD screen. And also if you fitted any new components around the hot end. That includes a new heater block, nozzle, cooling duct fan or even adding a silicon sock. So after PID tuning, you might notice that unfortunately your problem hasn't gone away. And this is definitely more common after doing a mainboard upgrade. This won't be free to fix, but it will be easy and only cost you a dollar or two. Most people reporting this error have upgraded from their stock board to an MKS Gen L. Mine is a HESI bought off eBay locally, but others have variation in the manufacturing. And that's because the schematics for this board are publicly available and therefore manufactured by various people, just like with Arduinos. 
These two megas look the same, except one of them is genuine, and you can see some subtle differences in the components, even though they're all in the same place. On our MKS board, the components letting us down are the combination of voltage regulator and smoothing capacitor. Fortunately, we can add an additional capacitor to the system and it should eliminate the problem. What we're looking for is an electrolytic capacitor, 1000 microfarads and rated for low ESR. To complete this fix, you don't really need to understand what any of this means as long as you buy the right part. You'll notice there's multiple models here rated for different voltages. That's not really a crucial parameter, that's just the upper limit before they go pop. And our system is 5 volts, so any of these would be fine. If you're like me and hoard electronics components that you find, you might think that you might already have one of these in stock, but it's very difficult to tell whether it's low ESR or not. I'll link in the description this video I found while researching that has a guide for which brands and series of capacitors are low ESR. In its description, it links to this spreadsheet that's referenced in the video. It is of course much easier just to buy one that's designated low ESR from the start. If you're wondering what the capacitor is going to do, you might be able to demonstrate it yourself with your 3D printer. You'll notice that when you kill the power, it takes several seconds for the power to turn off. And that's because the capacitor is storing electricity and then outputting it once the input power source is cut. Because of the capacitors in the power supply, I can cycle the power on and off and the function of the printer is uninterrupted. Capacitors in items like power supplies can still be storing charge, which is the reason why it can be dangerous to handle these even when they're unplugged. Installing our new capacitor is very easy and you don't even need to solder if you have the right tools. Here I'm going to crimp the wires of the capacitor into a 2-pin DuPont connector. I fold them in half to thicken them up and then crimp on each one before inserting it into one of the plastic connectors. We can plug it in anywhere on the board that has 5 volts and ground next to each other. In the bottom right hand corner of the board we have such pins and just pay attention that the silver stripe on the capacitor means negative and that should connect into ground. And here it is in action. I locate the lower two pins, I double check that the silver stripe for negative is facing the ground pin and then I plug it into place. If you're very careful, you can also bend it over if you're running out of room in your electronics housing. And this few minutes of time marks the end of your installation and hopefully the end of your temperature fluctuation too. This is a problem that 3D printers have come with straight from the factory. From Creality Melzi 113 boards onwards, there's been a small capacitor inserted in the extension A2 header between the 5 volt and ground pins. This was done to eliminate temperature fluctuation problems found on the original CR10s. Hopefully between those two fixes, you can solve your problem. And remember, it's a good idea if you had to add the capacitor to still do a PID auto-tune afterwards to get everything exactly how it should be. If you've been suffering from this issue, or maybe you've got an alternate fix, please let me and the other viewers know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.